The threat of data poisoning extends far beyond the scope of cybersecurity. Machine learning is used in just about every sector, with applications from self-driving cars to fraud detection. It's serious enough of a threat that it was addressed in the U.S. Department of Energy's 2022 Supply Chain Deep Dive Assessment. Let's explore how these attacks are possible, examine their nature, capability, and practicality. Towards the end, we'll discuss a few ironic implications and successful real-world data poisoning attacks on Google and Microsoft. First, we need a very basic understanding of data science. Let's take 60 seconds to explain the basic process that is attacked. Data is fed into machine learning algorithms that use math to analyze patterns and relationships in the data to create a model. This process is known as training. The data that is fed into the algorithm is referred to as training data or a training data set. The model contains rules, numerical relationships, and data structures that represent relationships and patterns between the various data points. It's best to think of the model as a program that contains data and procedure for using the data. These models are then used for a variety of tasks and are built into various products and applications. Often the training goes through multiple iterations, and the deployed model receives frequent training updates based on new data. Without getting into semantics, data poisoning is a broad type of attack that generally involves providing false or malicious data to a function with the goal of altering outcomes. The term data poisoning is mainly used to describe an attack on the previously described training process. The attacker alters existing data or adds new malicious data, known as poison, to the training data before it is fed into the algorithm, resulting in an altered model. Gaining access to the training data is easier than you may think. We'll cover that a bit later in the video. This attack on the training process is also sometimes called model poisoning. There are many different types of supervised and unsupervised learning algorithms that create different models for different use cases. If you are curious, here is a quick comparison between the two. Through various experiments, effective data poisoning attacks have been proven to be possible against just about every type of supervised and unsupervised learning algorithm. Here is a chart showing common types of learning algorithms and whether experiments have proven if they are vulnerable to data poisoning. Researchers from University of Cagliari in Italy and University of Tübingen in Germany conducted an experimental attack on a support vector machine algorithm that classifies digits. From changing one label on a data point, the classification error rose from initial error rates of 2 to 5 percent, to elevated error rates of 15 to 20 percent. Support vector machine algorithms are also commonly used for facial recognition, handwriting recognition, and other image recognition. Some of those same researchers, as well as other researchers from Kauf Oscar University of Venice, performed an experiment on an unsupervised clustering algorithm that clusters malware. They were able to successfully execute a poisoning attack to get the model to misclassify malware. Regression algorithms are commonly used in predictive analytics and forecasting for finance, marketing, and other strategic functions. Researchers from Fraunhofer Institute for Applied and Integrated Security conducted an experimental attack on regression. By poisoning about 2% of the training dataset, the median error increased by 29%. This proves a corporate espionage threat. Multiple researchers have performed experiments on naive Bayes classifiers used in spam filters and signature-based antivirus. They prove the algorithms to be highly susceptible to data poisoning attacks. It should be noted that an experiment by researchers from Duke University found K-nearest neighbors algorithms to be resilient against data poisoning attacks. K-nearest neighbors is commonly used to train text mining, facial recognition, and recommendation engines from small datasets. We can see that a small amount of poison data can cause a relatively large effect. Depending on the algorithm and use case, data poisoning attacks can accomplish a few different objectives. They can be exploratory, where the attacker is experimenting to find weaknesses. Or they can be cost of attacks that degrade the model's performance, ranging from specific errors to outright denial of service conditions. Attacks aimed at denial of service conditions are easy to detect. They may disrupt model development, but the effects will likely not make it through quality assurance. They may also affect the production environment if continued training happens in real time, but still the effects would be noticed and quickly corrected. The more concerning cost of attacks are the targeted attacks that are aimed at causing a specific misbehavior in the model, known as integrity or backdoor attacks. Such attacks can create a specifically targeted misbehavior that is triggered by attacker-chosen inputs that the model processes. These attacks can achieve their targeted objective while leaving the rest of the model behaving as expected, making it very difficult to detect. 
For example, a compromised malware classification model could achieve state-of-the-art performance, except classify one specific malware as benign. This could be done by causing a feature collision. Basically, an algorithm generates subtle features from the target object and adds them to the other object. They are then injected into the training data. University of Maryland researchers took features from a fish picture and added them to the dog picture. They cause the decision boundary to change, and the model identifies the fish image as a dog. These feature edits were so subtle that they could not be detected by the human eye, nor did they need to switch the labels in the training data. This is known as a clean label attack. For a feature collision to work, the poison needs to be very exact. Another tactic the researchers demonstrated was taking multiple, less exact features from the target image and adding them to the other image to produce similar results. This is known as a poison polytope. Training can consist of a simple algorithm that creates the model or the data can pass through multiple interconnected layers to create the model. The multiple layers are known as neural networks. Researchers from New York University successfully attacked a neural network used for self-driving cars. They added a small yellow square or other small marks to images of traffic signs in the training data, a technique called watermarking. They were able to get the algorithm to work as intended, except when it saw a stop sign with a specific marker like a yellow square. It would identify that stop sign with the marker as a speed limit sign about 90% of the time. Researchers from Northeastern University, FireEye, and Zalient applied this watermark tactic to successfully carry out a clean label backdoor attack against a malware classifier neural network. While preserving functionality, they injected data about Windows PE files, PDF files, and Android applications that contained features of their malware into the training dataset. They were able to get the model to classify their malware as benign PE files, PDFs, or Android apps 80 to 90% of the time, with 1% or less of the training data poisoned, while leaving the rest of the malware classifier relatively unaffected. This worked with multiple types of malware classifier algorithms, including random forests and support vector machines. We can see the potential of data poisoning attacks. Let's explore how realistic and practical they are. Attackers accessing the training data may seem unrealistic, but here is how they can. Many data scientists pull data from open repositories. Threat actors can leave their poisoned data sets in open repositories for unsuspecting victims. It would not be the first time threat actors have targeted developers via repositories. In cybersecurity, threat intelligence and other data is often crowdsourced, which makes it a natural injection point. Many apps algorithms learn from public-facing data. Poisons could be entered into the training data by simply leaving them on the web and waiting for them to be scraped by a data collection bot or human. This is especially practical for image poisoning attacks. For example, Amazon products contain upwards of 200 million samples. It is impractical to vet and verify the integrity of all of the images. Many apps algorithms ingest live data from interaction. This could be from really anywhere on the internet, especially social media as we'll see when we discuss the real-world attack on Microsoft. In the cybersecurity sector, threat actors can send poisoned emails to inboxes. Threat actors can infect honeypots with malware containing poisoned data. Threat actors can target firewalls, endpoints, and authentication systems to leave specific poisonous data in the logs. Now here's the ironic part. Adversaries change their malware, emails, behavior, and tactics to avoid detection. Security products measure these changes and feed the data into their algorithms to update their products. The irony is that more adaptive security products are more effective against evasion tactics, but more vulnerable to data poisoning attacks. Attackers could also attempt to gain API access to the database that is storing the training data. This could give them both information about the training data and the capability to edit the data. There is also another tactic that doesn't require any access to the data. Similar to how developers often pull open source code from repositories, developers and data scientists will often pull pre-trained models and add to them, especially if they do not have much data to train them. This is called transfer learning. Threat actors can post poisoned pre-trained models in the repositories for an unsuspecting victim. The self-driving car experiment, the backdoor malware experiment, and numerous others included transfer learning as part of their experiments and proved them successful. Some models require techniques that take weeks of computation time on high-end GPU, so some organizations choose to outsource the training. An untrustworthy organization could engineer a backdoor into the model, or the organization could be compromised and threat actors could engineer the backdoor. Due to bandwidth and privacy restrictions, IoT and mobile devices like Android use a distributed, edge computing structure. They run algorithms on the device and forward the model instead of forwarding all of the training data. This is known as a federated learning environment. 
The infrastructure upstream doesn't really have control over the learning they inherit. Threat actors can forward poison models. Researchers from Georgia Institute of Technology performed an experiment and demonstrated that federated learning systems are vulnerable to data poisoning attacks that can significantly affect the global model upstream from the devices. We've covered a lot of different details about attack vectors, techniques, and targets. Not all attacks have the same potential. Based on the variety of experimental attacks published, let's analyze the target's vulnerabilities and attacker capabilities. Generally, a single algorithm is more vulnerable than a neural network because poison often gets diluted as it gets processed by multiple neurons. Vulnerability of different types of algorithms vary widely. Generally, these attacks are very sophisticated attacks reserved only for very capable and mature organizations and nation states. Here is a chart ranking the potential of the attack types. Generally, transfer learning attacks where pre-trained poison models are adopted by the victim are less powerful. The pre-trained models are usually fine-tuned and added to for the specific use case, which dilutes the poison. But one nuance to transfer learning attack potential is how much the victim edits or adds to the transfer learning. Say the transfer learning is static and the victim only adds one layer on top. Or makes some minor changes. This could be a more powerful attack than say a data injection or data editing attack on a fully trainable end-to-end -end neural network. Although experiments have proven that either attack can have great effect. Attacker knowledge of the target is very important. Most of the experiments we've mentioned were done in white box to light gray box scenarios, where the attacker was knowledgeable about their target. The researchers used algorithms to craft poison data based off of the learning algorithm, relevant target features, and training data set. Generally, white box scenarios are only plausible for insider attacks. The researchers from University of Maryland benchmarked multiple different types of targeted backdoor, white box, and black box attacks on multiple different algorithms. In their report, they stated that they made the experiments reflective of realistic scenarios. White box attack success rates ranged from 100% to 3%. The black box attack success rates ranged from 32% to 1%. They found success rates to significantly vary based on attacker knowledge, but also the previously mentioned factors it's worth noting that even some of the low success rates in the black box attacks are not that far off from success rates of current cyber attacks. In a real world scenario with outside attackers, gray box attacks are the most plausible. The attackers can perform active and passive reconnaissance. The University of Maryland researchers demonstrated that if attackers interact with the model and measure the effect of their poisoning attempts, they can back into a conclusion about the algorithm being used. This tactic is very applicable to various cybersecurity products like antivirus, spam filters, and other products that adversaries can directly interact with in labs or an adversarial environment. Researchers at the University of Maryland use this tactic to conduct six targeted attack experiments on different supervised binary classification neural networks without knowing the algorithm structure. They poisoned one-tenth of a percent of the training data resulting in a roughly 50% success rate at getting their specific target image to be incorrectly classified. The researchers from the University of Maryland then successfully used the tactic to execute a clean-label attack against Google Auto Machine Learning. In a way undetectable to the human eye, they added bird-like features to an image of a dog. Then they added that poisoned image to the training data. With unpoisoned data, Google Auto Machine Learning classified images of a bird as a bird 82% of the time. With 0.2% of the training data poisoned, Google Auto Machine Learning classified the image of a bird as a dog 69% of the time. Attackers could also put themselves in the victim's shoes, pick the algorithm best for the victim's use case, and create a dataset best for the victim's use case. This is called the surrogate model. Their poisoning algorithm would then create poison data based off of the surrogate model. In the malware classification experiment conducted by researchers from Northeastern Fire High in Zealand, they also performed an attack generated from a surrogate model. From poisoning 1% of the training set, the model's accuracy of classifying their malware dropped 82%. In 2016, Microsoft released a Twitter chatbot called Tay. According to Microsoft, Forbes, and Atlas Mitre, it was programmed to engage in casual conversation on Twitter and learn from the engagement. Shortly after its release, attackers fed offensive tweets into Tay's algorithm by engaging with it. Tay started tweeting inappropriate and reprehensible words and images. Microsoft shut Tay down only 16 hours after launch. They later released an apology and an article on the lessons they learned. Eli Burstein, who leads Google cybersecurity and anti-abuse research, posted in a blog that there were at least four large-scale data poisoning attacks on Gmail spam filter in 2017 and 2018. 
According to Forbes, attackers sent millions of specially crafted emails designed to throw off the classifier and change its definition of a spam email. This allowed attackers to send malicious emails without being blocked by the spam filter. Data poisoning attacks are likely more common than we think. Because most of these attacks do not fall under breach disclosure laws, it's unlikely that information about them will be made public. Ironically, automation for machine learning has become a standard in cybersecurity, and we continue to adapt to our adversaries' evasion tactics, making us more vulnerable to data poisoning. As artificial intelligence and machine learning continue to explode, it seems like data poisoning will become more common.